everyone, welcome to Mark Wen Design EMC channel. One question I often got asked is if we do a near field probing on a PCB, how do we know if the radiating emission in the far field would pass or fail uh, the standard or limit? So in this session, we're going to look at methods of using near field measurement and try to predict the far field emission profile of a PCB. Here is the test setup. We have the DUT sits inside the tent because it's radiating emission. We have uh, a software running the process of scanning and we have again our uh, spectrum analyzer to do the uh, scanning. Inside the tent, we have a relatively large size TEM cell, okay? And the DUT we use is again a Texas Instrument DC-DC converter. We have used this PCB for demonstration of conducting emission and the result was matching the test house results really, really well. So in this case, we're using the same PCB and we're trying to demonstrate the radiating emission. As you can see inside the TEM cell, we lift the PCB um, on the on insulation support. The, according to the standard, for radiating emission, we need at least 1.5 meter long cable. Of course, we can't fit in that long cable length. So what I did is basically uh, lay out the cable in such a manner. Of course, this would affect the radiating emission if we compare the results with a test house uh, result, which they use a straight uh, cable. But we will just say how close with this setup compared to the test house uh, setup. I have to point out that behind the wire, we connect the DUT uh, to two lizards, if you can see there, and the lizards are both terminated with 50 ohm resistor. Okay, so once we set it up, we close the tent and we are going to do a scan. Again, we're using EMC View software to do the scanning. Choose file, load project. In the project folder, we choose CISPA 25 TEM cell, and we want class five limits, load class five limits. Okay, on the setup, we didn't use high pass filter in this case, so there's no need to change. All we need to change perhaps is just to change the lizard type to um, what we got here, TBOH, and that's all set. So let's start the scan. Okay, so we had the first scanning results starting from 150 kilohertz and to 245 megahertz. As we can see here, we got a narrow band low frequency noise starting from pretty much 200 is it 200, 400 kilohertz actually, uh, all the way through um, through the uh, spectrum, and then later we have some resonance from 30 megahertz to 245 megahertz. Okay, so we need to save the data. Let's go to File, Utilities, and we want to save Chart, and we want to save Chart and Traces. Okay, so in this case, I already saved uh, the, the file name here, which we call them TEMCELL x-axis so we'll save the x-axis result and then we will change the pcb location and then we will do a y-axis scanning and z-axis scanning okay so now we've got um, the scanning results from three different axes x y and z and we save the results so let, let's load the, um, the the traces so we go to file utilities and then we'll go to load reference trace so as you can see here we've got trace one trace two trace three in which we will load x y z axis results uh, respectively okay so trace one access utilities load reference trace two we load y as you can see when when we loaded the results in the reference both average and peak values are displayed because we did the scanning simultaneously load reference trace 3 which was z axis okay so now we loaded the three 
results. As I said, um, both average and peak values are displayed. So in this case, let's just look at the average value first. So if I untick the uh, set two, which we know set two is always uh, peak values. So trace one set two, I untick the box. Trace two set to the same. Trace three set to the same. So now I'm only displaying the average results of the uh, tensile scanning of x, y, z axis. Okay, so they all show here. Notice there's a button called EN61000. Okay, so that's the button. So click this button and then click calculate. Okay, this brings us to the 61000-4-20 mode. Okay, to keep it short, 61000-4-20 defines a method which you can use the algorithm and then put in the tensile results in x, y, z axis, and then you can use the algorithm to predict the far field uh, emission profile of your DUT. So in this case, we we'll just keep it simple. We want to compare uh, an antenna which sits at one meter. That's the CISPR 25 um, setup often does, right? So we'll put EUT antenna at one meter distance. Antenna over ground, doesn't really matter. Let's just keep it at one meter. EUT height over cell floor, 10 centimeters. And uh, spectrum height, I think in this case is about, uh, is it uh, 15, if I can remember, 15 cent centimeters for my TEM cell model and TEM cell factor, keep it one, okay? And what I will do is I will, because as we explained, we are displaying set one, set one, set one of trace one, two, three, which is the average value. So we are going to calculate set one using the algorithm I just uh, described, okay? So calculate set one. Okay, it's quick, pretty quick. You, you can now see this light green trace showing on the screen, which indicates the calculated far field emission results based on the tensile results we got. To look, at, to look at the results more clearly, let's just untick the tensile results for now, and that brings us this. Now, the 61,000 dash 4 dash 20 although it gives the algorithm but i think the algorithm only works starting from 30 megahertz upwards which means if we are using this algorithm below 30 megahertz this region the algorithm won't give us accurate results so we should trust more from 30 megahertz in this case, to 245 megahertz result. Okay, so this is the predicted far field uh, radiation. Let's have a comparison with the lab test results. On the left shows the typical active monopole antenna setup, and here's the uh, lab test results. And bottom is our TEM cell results. These are directly from the TEM cell scanning results, as we explained. If we look at the overall profile, we can see that the tensile results actually captured all the uh, harmonics, which is pretty good. And the average, uh, if you look at the profile, generally they are below 30 dB microvolts per meter. So if we compare it with the lab results, we can see that from pretty much 1 megahertz, the lab results is also below 30 dB microvolts per meter. So I would say the results from 1 megahertz can be comparable between the lab results and the TEM cell results. Because the biggest difference is actually the first uh, fundamental frequency, which is the switching frequency of the switch mode power supply, which we actually got more than 10 dB difference here. Considering this is at a very low frequency end, I think the difference is acceptable. There is always a limitation due to the physical structure uh, once we're talking about very low frequency end, okay? Moving to uh, the frequency range between 30 to 300 megahertz, typical biconic antenna setup according to CISPR 25. As we explained in the uh, CISPR 25 defined test setup, we use uh, straight wire 
and this wire is often uh, 1.5 meters at least. Whereas in our setup, we have to uh, lay out the wire in a, in a snake shape, which will inevitably shape the resonance um, frequency in the uh, scanning results, as we can see from here, right? If we look at uh, the resonance point of their radiating emission profile compared to ours, we'll get very different results. Although shape-wise, if you look at this shape and this shape, they are comparable, and we also got a resonance peak the same as theirs, but uh, they will be located at very different frequency points as for the reason we explained. I think the key message here is if we compare the limit, right? Here, our result shows about uh, shows the radiation emission is below 25 dB microvolts per meter, and theirs also shows uh, very similar results. If you look at their results, it's below 25 dB microvolts per meter. So that, if we have a straight limit line, we can probably conclude if uh, the DOT pass or fail the result. But of course, if your limit line is as shown here, then it's difficult to judge uh, based on our tensile results, um, simply because of the limitation we explained the the layout of the cable the wire connects between the DOT and the lizard in this case so overall i think um, the tensile results uh, does give us very good indication in terms of the far field prediction so that's why i personally i i still prefer to use tensile to do my uh, far field radiating emission prediction.